Hello and welcome to D's. Our topic today is graphing parabolas. And our goal, I can switch the equation of a parabola from standard form to vertex form in order to graph the parabola. So what is the standard form and vertex form thing anyway? And notice it says completing the square. What the heck is up with completing the square? Well, we're going to go through that. The process we're going to learn today is called completing the square. Uh, and we're going to learn what standard form and vertex form mean. Well, vertex form you've been using. This equation is in vertex form. Gives me all kinds of useful information. I know what the vertex is. The vertex comes from these two things. The vertex is 3 and 6. I know that this thing has a minimum value because it's right side up. And that minimum value happens to be 6. I know what the range is. The range is y is any real number, but since it has a minimum of 6, all our y's have to be bigger than that minimum value. I also know that its axis of symmetry is x equals 3 because the axis of symmetry has to go through that. I know all kinds of stuff about this from that equation. That is vertex form. That is very, very useful. Now, if I expand this like this thing asks me to, I have to expand those brackets. Remember, I'm squaring a binomial. Square the first term. Multiply these two things together, and then I know there's two of them, so I double it, so that gives me negative 6x. And then square the last term gives me plus 9. And then I have this plus 6 hanging around on the end. Multiply the 2 through the brackets. I get 2x squared minus 12x plus 18, and then plus 6. And then lastly, 2x squared minus 12x, and the plus 18 and the plus 6 go together to give me plus 24. Now, this new version is called standard form. Uh, it graphs exactly the same parabola as the original equation, which is in vertex form, but it gives us much, much less information when we just are presented with that equation. Since we don't know the vertex just by looking at the equation, it is difficult to graph, and we don't know the max or min value. In fact, there is actually only one thing in standard form that standard form is good for. And we want to find the inter y-intercept of this. Remember to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So I'm going to plug x equal to 0 in here. y equals 2x minus 3 uh, squared plus 6. Instead of the x, I'm going to write 0. And so that actually gives me uh, negative 3 squared is positive 9 times 2 is 18. And then I have to add that 6, which gives me 24. And so if we compare that to our standard form equation, and it's no, uh, it's no coincidence that this equation actually shows us that this y-intercept is actually this constant term on the end. And the reason for that is if I plug 0 in for these two x's in here, those terms are just going to go away, and all I'm left with is 24. So this equation in standard form is useful only to tell us that the constant on the end is the y-intercept. Otherwise, I'd rather have it in vertex form where I got all that other useful information. So it would be nice if I could take an equation that's in standard form that I don't know the vertex form of and put it back into vertex form. And that's what we're going to look at right now. It's called completing the square. So let's start by remembering how to expand these binomials. I take the first term and I square it. I multiply the two things together to give me 5x. And then I know there's two of them, so I double it to give me 10x. And then I square the last term, which gives me plus 25. So I'm going to do that again here. I square the first term, x squared. I multiply the two things together to give me negative 8x. And I know there's two of them, so that actually gives me negative 16x. And then I square the last term, which gives me plus 64. So if I told you these following things were from perfect square trinomials, Hopefully, you would be able to tell me um, what the blanks are. So I know this 10x came from doubling the things that were in the brackets. So this had to be a plus 5 in here, so that when I double it, I get 10. Um, and if this is a 5 on the end, I get the constant term from squaring that 5. So this must be 25 in here. 
Did you follow that thought process? I'm going to do it a couple more times. So this one here has a tw negative 12. I know that negative 12 came from doubling this thing over here, so that must have been negative 6. And I know this blank in here comes from, if I expand this thing, I have to do negative 6 times negative 6. That's going to give me positive 36. One more time. This one down here, this negative 20 has to come from doubling this thing over here. So that must have been negative 10 because negative 10x doubled is negative 20. And of course, to get this thing on the end, if I'm expanding out this bracket, if I am expanding out this bracket, I would do square the first term and get uh, x squared. Multiply the two things together, double it to get negative 20x, and then square the last term, which would give me plus 100. And just in case you still haven't got it, let's try it one last time. Uh, if this is going to expand to be this, I know that I multiplied these two things together and doubled them to get this 16. So that means this must have been a plus 8. And in order for this to be a plus 8, this in here must be 64 because I square this thing to get this constant term on the end. Now, how does this help us? How to complete the square. We want to change y equals x squared plus 8x minus 12 into vertex form. So we want to try and turn this into a squared bracket. The problem is that negative 12 is not the correct constant term for this to be a perfect square. I need a squared bracket, so here's what we're going to do. First, separate the constant term, which is not what we want, from the rest of the equation. So I'm going to separate that constant term like that by putting in the brackets. Uh, step two, jump down a couple of steps. If this bracket were going to be, oops, if this bracket were going to be the perfect square of a binomial, what binomial would it be? Well, I know that this came from doubling what was in the bracket, so this must be plus four. And now what constant term is missing from the bracket to make it a perfect square trinomial? Well, it must be a plus 16 because I had to square that. So basically my thought process here is I divide this by 2 to get what's in there because I know I had to double this to get 8, so I have to divide by 2 to go the other direction. And then I have to square the 4 to get the 16. Now the problem is, now I've added this 16 in. That 16 was not in the original question. I just had that minus 12. So that plus 16 is a problem. In order to fix that problem, I have to kind of reverse it. So here's what happens. I know that this was a plus 4 down here. I know this was a plus 16. But if I add 16 in, I also have to subtract it. Because plus 16 minus 16 is just 0, so I haven't changed a darn thing. So now I just... This is what I wanted. This here is the same as this bracket. So I have to pull that bracket in. And I get x squared plus 8x plus 16. And then that minus 16 comes out. And it can combine with that minus 12. So now I have minus 28 on the end. And this is vertex form. This is the same thing as my original question. We're going to try a few more of those. So here, first thing I have to do is put brackets around the first two terms. After I put brackets around the first two terms, I jump down a couple of lines and I try to figure out what that squared bracket must be. That squared bracket has to be x minus 3 because when I double it, I get 6. So now I'm going to write this down again. I know this is x squared minus 6x, and then I have to square this thing to get a plus 9. And this plus 18 is just hanging around on the end there. But if I add 9 into it, I also have to take 9 away because I don't want to change anything. And now I'm going to try and snap this bracket in here because this part here is the same as my squared bracket, and that's what I wanted. 
So I'm going to snap that bracket in by x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9 and then plus 18 on the end. And minus 9 plus 18 is just plus 9. And I'm done. This thing is the same as what I started with. Now here, brackets around the first two terms. There isn't a third term, so that's easy. Now I'm going to write this down again, x squared plus 12x. Leave a space because I know I'm going to fill in there. Jump down a couple of lines. And I know that if I want a squared bracket, this is going to have to have x plus 6 because I know I need to double 6 to get 12. And in order to get what's missing here, I square this 6. So I get plus 36 because when I expand out this bracket here, I square the first term, which gives me x squared. I multiply the two things together and double them, which is going to give me the 12x. And then I square the last term, which gives me the plus 36. However, I can't just randomly stick plus 36 in there. I changed it, so I have to take 36 away again. Now I get x squared plus 12x. I got to pull that negative 36 out of the bracket. And there's nothing for it to combine to, so it just comes down here, and it's negative 36. Next one. Brackets around the first two terms. x squared minus 40x. Leave a big space. Plus 2 on the end. Now I'm going to jump down a couple of steps. If this came from a squared bracket, the squared bracket must have been x minus 20, because I know I have to double it to get 40. Now I have to square 20, and I get plus 400 out here, but I can't stick 400 in without changing things, so I also have to subtract 400. Now I need that subtract 400 out of the brackets because right here is the same thing as my squared bracket, so what I actually have is x squared minus 40x plus 400, and then minus 400 plus 2 on the end, which gives me minus 300. And 98, which is kind of a nasty thing. I wouldn't want to graph that. Now, not all perfect square, like these don't all just have an x in the front. So what happens if I have an x, at, I have a number in front of the x squared when a is not 1? Well, here we go. We're going to do this step by step again. Start the same way as we did by putting brackets around the first two terms. So I need to separate off this from this thing that's not what I want. So put brackets around the first two terms. And now we want to divide the coefficient out of the brackets. So I'm going to take negative 4 out of the brackets, and that gives me x squared minus 6x. Now I don't take it out of the 8, because the 8's not in the brackets. So I divide that negative 4 out of those two brackets. Step two, jump down a couple of steps. If this is the bracket that we were going to need, if this bracket were going to be a perfect square, uh, what would the binomial be? Well, if this is going to be negative 6, this must have been a negative 3. Remember, i got to take half of it, because if I double this, I get 6. So to go the other way, I'm going to take half of it. So this has to be minus 3. Then I must have to put a plus 9 in here. And a minus 9, whoops, in order to correct the brackets. So that's the same as we did a minute ago. So what is up with this step 3? Whoops. Step 3 says you can't just put add something into the equation. You have to change it back again. So what we have here with this minus 9, I change it back again. But now we want to get that out of the question. And before, I just snapped that bracket in. I just pulled that negative 9 out. Can't do that now, though, because this negative 4 is out front, and that negative 4 belongs to absolutely everything inside that bracket, including that negative 9. So in order to get the negative 4 out, uh, or in order to get that negative 9 out, I have to multiply that negative 9 by the negative 4. And that's really what comes out of the bracket. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 36 minus 12, which gives me my positive 24 on the end. Okay. And now we're done. Oh, this doesn't have the negative 4 out front. That negative 4 has to stay out front. We're going to try a few more of those. 
hopefully this doesn't go on too too long for you. Uh, I'm going to pull out this. I got to put brackets around the first two terms. Take out the two. I get x squared plus 10x. Leave a gap plus 43 on the outside. I'm going to jump down a couple of steps. If this thing was a square bracket, it would have to be x minus 5 all squared because I have to take half a 10 because I know if I was expanding it, I would double it. And now I have to put a plus 25 in here because to get the thing that's missing, I square that thing. So I add 25. But I can't just randomly add 25 in. I have to subtract it as well. Now, this x squared plus 10x plus 25 is the same as this squared bracket, which is what I wanted. So I have to get that negative 25 out of there. I can't just pull negative 25 out because this 2 is affecting it. So it multiplies by it, and what actually comes out is negative 50. And it's going to combine with the plus 43 that was hanging around on the end to give me negative 7. Now this next one I'm giving you an example of just because the uh, the number we're pulling out is negative and you've got to be really careful with negatives negative switch signs so when I divide the negative 3 out of the first two terms I actually get x squared plus 6x and then that plus 13 is hanging around on the end jump down a couple of steps I know if this thing is coming from a squared bracket it's going to be x plus 3 because I have to take half of that when I go down there because I know that I have to double that when I go up there. Sort of a round and around kind of process. Now to get what's going up here, I have to square the 3, so I'm going to get a plus 9. And then I have to subtract 9 again to correct my equation. Now in order to get that negative 9 out of there, because that bracket, x squared plus 6x plus 9, is actually the square of this bracket. Don't believe me, double check it. But in order to get that negative 9 out of there, I have to multiply it by the negative 3, which means that I'm actually taking out a positive 27. And that positive 27 is going to go with the positive 13 and give me positive 40 on the end. Now, the very last one, and it's got a, uh, it's got a half in front of it. You've got to be careful when you're taking a half out. When you divide by a half, it's the same as multiplying by 2. I'm saying, how many halves are there in 2? Well, the answer to that is there's 4. So when I take 2 and I divide it by a half, and if you don't believe me, type into your calculator 2 divided by 0.5, you actually get 4. So the plus 5 is on the end. Now I jump down a couple of steps, and my squared bracket is going to be x minus 2. Remember, because I have to double this in order to get the 4, so to go the other way, I take half of it. And then I have a plus 4, and to correct it, I have to subtract 4. Now, be careful with this half again. This x squared minus 4x plus 4 is actually the perfect square of this bracket. So I need to take that 4 out, and to take the 4 out, I have to multiply it by a half. Well, half of 4, half of negative 4 is negative 2, and that combines with the 5 to give me a plus 3 on the end out here. And that concludes our lesson on completing the square.